Hello, everyone. I'm Zoe, a Gallatin student concentrating in ethics of law and conflict psychology. This summer, I did my fellowship at Burma Task Force, a project of justice for all. I call it vision versus action, and the reason for that will become apparent throughout the presentation. So the organization, JFA, has many branches. It initially began its work in Bosnia and then began to work on hate crimes in India, eventually the Rohingya genocide and then the genocide of the Uyghur. So as you might be able to tell, we were stretched pretty thin. Um, initially, I was supposed to focus on the Rohingya crisis and specifically the role of Facebook and digital media in that crisis. Um, but as is true with many human rights organizations, you go where you're needed. Um, initially, the uh, focus was on genocide and mass atrocity prevention, but in line with those goals, we have smaller ones like advocacy of child education for those in camps. I worked mainly on the Uyghur and Rohingya issues. Um, so in this timeline, you'll see that the state of Rohingya refugee camps is still dismal. The crisis went into full swing in October of 2016, during which the Burmese government began a brutal crackdown on the Rohingya following an attack on the Burmese military by a fringe Rohingya independence group. The military junta initiated a systematic effort to wipe the Rohingya out of Myanmar through tactics such as village burnings, extrajudicial killings, and gang rape. It is estimated that about 1 million Rohingya refugees live in the refugee camps of Bangladesh, another 40,000 in India, and 106,000 in Malaysia. So the situation in these camps are again dismal. India, with its increasingly hostile treatment of Muslim minorities, has attempted to, and to some extent, succeeded in deporting refugees back to Myanmar. The situation was initially better in Malaysia, a majority Muslim nation, but in recent years, hostilities towards Rohingya have increased and Rohingya face greater restrictions and monitoring. In Bangladesh, the largest refugee camp, Cox's Bazaar, there was a massive fire in March of 2021, killing a dozen with another 1,000 injured or missing. Refugees in Cox's Bazaar increasingly face violence from police in the camp, human trafficking, joblessness, and deprivation of education. The joblessness and deprivation of education are a result of government policy, which has bulldozed Rohingya schools and prevented Rohingya from working outside the camps. So it has been six years um, since the crisis went into full swing. And as time passes, the tension towards this crisis only continues to fade. I have learned how to interact with government officials and staffers as part of my work here. And this is the fine line that you have to walk. Trying to get something out of any government official is always a grueling task, especially anything concrete. But in order to get anywhere close to getting what you want from them, you need to balance on a fine line between really pushing for what you need, letting them know very clearly the importance of the issue, and following up with them on it, whilst also not becoming overly confrontational. So calling them out on their hypocrisy is often not the way to go. Um, for example, I had the staff of a representative claimed that the representative would not like to support a special envoy to monitor and combat Islamophobia because it gave too much power to the executive, whereas that same representative had supported the creation of a special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. So whereas it would be reasonable to bring that up, it would in fact be detrimental to the cause call them out on that. So this is a tweet by Pompeo, not the person I talked to, um, but it, it is about the special envoy on anti-Semitism. Um, I will admit, at times it was difficult for me to participate in the work enthusiastically because it moved at such a slow pace. Um, things at the UN in general move at an astonishingly slow pace. 
Um, but what I needed to recognize was that that was not my call to make. The refugees I worked with had faith in this system. It gave them something to cling onto. It gave them something to focus on and to work towards. And I needed to respect that um, and do the work that they thought was helpful to their cause. Thank you.